Knife base is a type of classification algorithm based on Bayes' theorem. The knife part comes from the assumption that all features are independent of each other given the class. In other words, knife base assumes that the presence or absence of one feature doesn't affect the probability of another feature being present or absent. This assumption simplifies the calculation significantly making knife bias a computationally efficient algorithm. Picture this, you open your email inbox and it's flooded with messages like, congratulations, you have won a free iPad, click here to claim your price. Or even worse, urgent, your bank account has been compromised, click here to update your information. Spam. It's annoying, time wasting and sometimes dangerous. But what if we could train our email client to recognize these messages and automatically filter them out? Let's break down how we can build an email spam filter like a software engineer would do. Now one approach to spam filtering is to use simple handcrafted rules. We could start with a few straightforward rules. Say our rule one is if the email contains phrases like free price, urgent action required, then we mark it as spam. Or if the email is from unknown sender, we mark it as spam. Or if the email has lots of typos or grammatical errors, we mark it as spam. This approach is simple, but it has drawbacks. Spammers can easily adapt to these rules and genuine emails might get caught in the filter. Machine learning offers a more sophisticated adaptable solution, the knife based algorithm. In particular, it excels at text classification tasks like spam filtering. But before we delve into its inner workings, let's establish a foundation in probability theory. Bayes' theorem is a fundamental principle in probability theory that describes how to update our beliefs about an event based on new evidence. It's mathematical formula that looks like this, where P of A given B is the probability of event A happening given that the event B has occurred. This is also called posterior probability. This tells us that the probability of a hypothesis A being true after we have observed some evidence B. It's our updated belief about the hypothesis based on the new information. P of B given A is the probability of event B happening given that the event A has already occurred. This is called the likelihood. This tells us how likely the evidence B is to occur if the hypothesis A were true. P of A is the probability of event A happening, which is also called as a prior probability and P of B is the probability of event B happening, which is also considered as the evidence. Now in the context of spam filtering, event A is the email is spam and event B is this email contains certain words, for example, free or money. We can adapt Bayes' theorem to calculate the probability that an email is spam given the words it contains. This equation answers the question, what is the probability of an email being spam given the specific words W it contains. Naive Bayes is a simplified version of Bayes' theorem. The naive part comes from the assumption that all the features, words in our case, are conditionally independent given the class, spam or not spam. This means the presence of one word doesn't affect the probability of another word being present. With this assumption, we can simplify the equation to this where w1, w2 to wn, these are individual words in the email. And it can be further rewritten as this. This equation, p of spam given the word, is designed to answer a crucial question. What is the probability of that an email is spam given the words it contains? The numerator here represents the evidence that supports the email being spam. In this equation, this is the probability of seeing the particular words W in known spam email. It reflects how common these words are in spam. For example, if the email contains a word like free, million dollars or urgent, this probability would be higher. This is the overall probability of an email being spam. For example, if 30% of our training emails were spam, then P of spam is equal to 0.3. Now multiplying these things together gives us an indication of how likely the specific combination of words is to occur in spam email. The denominator takes into account all possible scenarios for the words W. And here is the equation. Here, this is the same as the numerator. The probability of seeing the words in a spam email. 
and this is the probability of seeing the words in legitimate or say non spam email and p of not spam is the overall probability of an email being not spam or 1 minus p of spam this part of the equation essentially says the words w could have appeared in spam email or in the non spam email let's consider both possibilities now the entire bayes theorem equation is a ratio like this which is basically the probability of being spam given a word is the evidence for the spam divided by all possible scenarios for the words by dividing the evidence of spam by the total probability of all scenarios we get a normalized value this value tells us the probability that the email is spam given the specific word it contains in simple terms imagine you are trying to figure out a dog is a golden retriever or not you see that the dog has golden fur which is an evidence for golden retriever however there are other dogs with golden fur too so you consider all the dogs with golden fur all possible scenarios and by comparing the evidence to all possibilities you can determine how likely it is that the specific dog is a golden retriever similarly naive bias compares the evidence for spam or words in this email to all possible scenarios to both spam and non spam emails this helps us to calculate the probability that the email is spam now before we dive into the probability calculations let's discuss an important concept vocabulary in naive bayes a vocabulary is a list of all the unique words the model considers think of it as the model's dictionary each email is then represented as a vector of numbers where each element corresponds to a word in the vocabulary the value can be binary say 1 for present and 0 for absent or represent the frequency of the word in the email so let's revisit our example email say we have this email with subject urgent claim your prize and the body you want a free prize of 1 million dollars and click here to claim your money now and say we have this vocabulary of five words free money win urgent and click to include the word count we can modify the vector representation like this this means free at index 0 in the vocabulary appears two times money at index 1 appears one time win is absent and appears zero times and so on and so forth so given this email we want to determine the probability that this email is spam or in other words the probability that an email is spam given the words in the email let's focus on two keywords in this email free and money so then we need to find out p of spam given the words are free and money let's assume that we have a data set of 1000 emails 300 of which are spam we have also analyzed the word frequencies in our data set as shown here from this data we can calculate the following probabilities so for instance the probability of free given the email is spam is 200 by 300 or 0.67 the probability of having the word money in the email given it's a spam is 180 by 300 or 0.6 and so on and so forth for simplicity Naive face assumes that free and money appearing in the email are independent events. This means the presence of one word doesn't influence the probability of the other. We want to find the probability of spam given the words free and money have occurred using Bayes theorem with a naive assumption. And which translates to this. Now, we need to calculate the denominator p of free comma money which represents the probability of seeing both free and money in the email substituting these values we calculated earlier this is what we get so basically probability of having free or money words in the email is 0.1206 and now we can plug everything back into bayes theorem like this so basically the probability of email being spam given the words free and money is approximately 0.995 or 99.5% This means the email is very likely to be a spam if the words free and money appear. Now note that this is a highly simplified example. Real spam filters use more sophisticated techniques and consider many more words and features. And naive bias isn't perfect, but it's surprisingly effective starting point for building a spam filter. All right. Now, the probability of the word w given the email is spam represents the probability that a specific word like money appears in spam message however to calculate this accurately we need to consider the context of other words in the message ideally 
the probability of word given it's a spam should reflect the probability of seeing a word only in spam emails and not in any other type of emails this means considering whether the word appears alone or in combination with other words to calculate the probability of money appearing in spam email without any other vocabulary words present we would need to count how many spam emails contain only the word money and no other words from our vocabulary let's say our vocabulary has 100 words and the word money is the 53rd word for the word money which is the 53rd word in our vocabulary you count how many times it appears in spam emails as follows the numerator here ideally wants to count the number of spam emails that contain the word money but don't contain any other words from our vocabulary this helps us to isolate the specific impact of the word money on the probability of an email being spam other words in the email would either amplify or diminish the spamminess signal of money for instance the phrase make money online might be more common in spam while donate money to charity might be more common in legitimate emails by isolating money we prevent these other words from skewing the our calculations here is what it means count of words given that it's a spam means we are counting the occurrences within the context of spam emails we are only looking at emails that have already been classified as spam w underscore 53 represents the word money this symbol means and so we are looking for cases where money appears and other conditions are also met and this part represents the absence of all other words in the vocabulary the symbol means not so not w underscore one means not word one and not w underscore two means not word two and so on and so forth we want to count money only when none of the other 99 words in our vocabulary are present in the same spam email this part of the denominator simply counts how many times the word money appears in spam emails this is a straightforward count of all occurrences of money regardless of whether the other words are present or not so let's say we have five spam emails free money now click here for your money urgent claim your money lottery winner you won money or you owe me money if we were to calculate the numerator strictly it would be only count email number 5 because it's the only one that contains money without any other words from our vocabulary and that is where comes the naive bayes compromise in practice due to the naive bayes assumption the words are independent we don't actually calculate the numerator this way instead we simplify it by just counting all the occurrences of money in spam emails regardless of whether other words are present or not so in our example the numerator and denominator would be 5 because money appears on all five spam emails the simplification makes the calculation much easier and it still often works well in practice so the true conditional probability that is the probability of seeing money given that the email is spam should ideally reflect the chance of seeing money regardless of any other words present this is the information we are seeking when we want to classify a new email however due to the naive bayes assumption that words are independent we don't strictly enforce this condition without the naive bayes assumption calculating the probability of seeing a specific word only when no other words from the vocabulary are present becomes exponentially more complex you need to consider all possible combination of words in your vocabulary for a vocabulary of even moderate size say 1000 words the number of combinations become astronomical This means the computation time required to calculate the numerator would increase dramatically potentially making the model impractical for real time applications like spam filtering. For example, imagine you have spam filter with vocabulary list of just 10 words. To calculate the probability of seeing a specific word, say money, only when no other words are present, you need to consider all these possibilities. And if it is money with any one other word, there will be nine other words that could appear with it. and same goes with money with two other words or money with any three other words and so on and so forth so the possibilities of money appearing with all the nine words can grow exponentially as you can imagine even with moderate vocabulary size of 1000 words the number of possible combinations becomes astronomical calculating the probability of each of this combination would require an immense amount of computation making it impractical for real time applications like spam filtering The naive bayes assumption allows us to simplify this significantly because we assume the word independence the probability of not seeing any other word doesn't affect the probability of seeing money this means 
we only need to consider the probability of each individual word appearing in spam rather than all possible combinations. In other words, we simply count how often money appears in spam emails and divide by the total number of spam emails. The knife based assumption greatly simplifies this calculation by assuming that words are independent. The simplification allows us to calculate the numerator much more efficiently, even with large vocabularies. While it might be sacrificing some accuracy by ignoring word dependencies, the knife based model often performs surprisingly well in practice. In spam filtering, where speed and efficiency are crucial, the knife based assumption is a valuable trade off. It enables us to build fast and effective spam filtering that can handle the vast amounts of email data flowing through our inboxes every day. However, if computational resources and data availability are not constraints, exploring models that can capture word dependencies could lead to even more accurate spam filters. This is an active area of research in natural language processing. While the naive assumption isn't perfectly accurate, naive base is surprisingly effective for many text classification tasks. And that's how you use Bayes theorem to calculate the probability of spam given certain words in an email. In our next video, we'll explore Laplace's theorem, which is a variation of Bayes theorem that can be used when we have limited data and need to make assumptions about the prior probabilities.